What's going on, Bucks fans? Rachel West here along with Rick Stroud and Joey Knight. And guys, the Bucks finally got the monkey off their backs playing the Saints. They got that win in New Orleans on Sunday. But as we all saw, big altercation, brawl on the field. Mike Evans now suspended for a game. What's the fallout of that, Rick? Well, the sky is weeping here in Tampa, so that <laughs> might be part of it. But as we do this, Mike Enz Evans suspended uh, for one game again. Uh, this happened again in, you know, back in 2017. And even though he didn't think that what he did was as egregious, the, the NFL disagreed. Their vice president, John, John Runyon, sent him a letter saying that you essentially caused a melee with your actions. He's going to appeal that suspension, but it's a tremendous loss if his appeal is unsuccessful. That means they go in against the Green Bay Packers without their number one receivers. We know they have injuries to Julio Jones and Chris Godwin. So, um, you know, Todd Bowles is not happy about this, obviously not just losing a player, but it's a lesson for the rest of the players that you've got to keep your team first. You have to control your emotions out there. And, you know, basically he's hurt his team now. Right, and Joey, as he just touched on, they're now going, playing the Packers. Um, their offense has kind of been struggling here these first couple of games, so how does that impact things moving on into this week? Well, Rick just addressed it now. Um, you're down a number of targets, not just a primary one. Todd Bowles told us earlier today that Julio Jones, he's not sure if he's going to be back from that knee injury. He didn't play against the Saints. His status is still uncertain. Now you're down Mike Evans. Now you're down Chris Godwin. And just to go a bit further, your tight ends, I think, have combined for two receptions so far in two games this season. So the, uh, the offensive options are starting to be whittled down. Um, they're going to have to figure out something. Uh, Todd Bowles doesn't seem concerned. He just says, you know, we, we need to get production from everybody. It's not just the tight end position. We need everybody to contribute. Well, the number of everybody's is starting to dwindle. So, I mean, Leonard Fournette has has been a workhorse these first two games, and you don't know whether he'll be able to hold up over the course of a 17-game season, but he's one option. They need something from those backup tailbacks. Giovanni Bernard, he went out with an ankle injury. Keyshawn Vaughn was inactive. Rashad White, the rookie, really didn't do much. So, the options right now seem kind of limited offensively going into uh, this Sunday's home opener against a pretty good Green Bay team. Yeah, definitely. Two touchdowns over two games, not a spot that they want to be in, but we'll see if they can improve on that side of the ball. And on the other side of the ball, Rick, um, things are looking pretty good there. The defense has really been um, the biggest factor in these wins the last couple weeks, so they got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. Yeah, I mean, they've given up one offensive touchdown, and, and really that was kind of a garbage time touchdown uh, against uh, the Saints. And, and really, if you look at it, it's, it's a complete effort, right? Uh, they've had 10 sacks in the first two games. Uh, they forced, uh, what was it, uh, I guess five turnovers um, against the Saints, four or five turnovers. And, and they had, like I said, the pressure and the coverage together. Jamel Dean is off to a great start with two interceptions. You saw Mike Edwards return one for a touchdown, which all he does is score touchdowns when he intercepts the ball. He did that against Green Bay um, as well in the past. So listen, um, I, I think Todd Bowles could not be more pleased with where they are defensively. Um, they're a little more healthy over on that side of the ball and that's part of it. The communication's been good in the secondary and they've got a nice mix of younger guys and older players playing well. So they got to keep that going against Aaron Rodgers, arguably the, the other greatest quarterback in the league right now. And even though the Packers had a, a tough week one, they bounced back and this is a big game in a home opener as well. Yep, they had a strong showing last night against the Bears too. Um, and Joey, just to go a little bit further into, Rick touched on the Godwin and Jones injury. Don't know if they're going to be back. There was also a couple other injuries in the game yesterday in New Orleans. Josh Wells, uh, Akeem Hicks, where did they stand? And Brandon Walton coming in, he showed that he can play with them. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Todd Bowles plays it really close to the vest when he talks about injury. So I think it was very telling when he just told us earlier today that Akeem Hicks and Josh Wells are really banged up. That does not bode well. That does not sound promising for those two guys going into the, um, the Green Bay game. We still don't know if Donovan Smith will be available. Um, I, I, I would tend to be a tad more optimistic this week than I was last week. Of course, he's dealing with a hyperextended elbow. But if Donovan Smith can't go, yes, you're probably looking at Seminole High alumnus Brandon Walton, who played 45 snaps the other day. Uh, a majority of those on offense after Josh Wells went down with, with his injury, and Todd Bowles lauded him, said he play, played very hard, play, played very solid for, for the position that he was thrust into. So 
Um, if Donovan Smith and Josh Wells can't go at left tackle, you're looking at Seminole High alumnus Brandon Walton making his first NFL start. It's always something. They keep it interesting, this team, that's for sure. Uh, make sure you guys are keeping up with all of our Bucks coverage that we've got for you leading up to the Packers game on Sunday over on social media at Sports by Tampa Bay Times as well as over at TampaBay.com.